Texas Tech is set to host two big transfer portal targets this weekend out in the 806, including one, well, that played in the national championship game about a month ago. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I am RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast channel. And before we get into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone that has subscribed to the channel in this past year. I just looked at it. We really started ramping up just about a year ago, and we have seen crazy growth on here. Over 7,000 new subscribers in a year. Y'all are absolutely insane, and we're almost to 8K. So be sure to grow the fastest growing and most interactive Texas Tech community right here on YouTube and join the Back to 12 squad and all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. All right, let's jump into it as Texas Tech has two visitors this weekend of the big man variety. One we've already talked about in Warren, Washington, but it is confirmed he is now on campus out in the 806 right now for his official visit. Again, just a quick recap of his game. A seven-footer, 225, long, lengthy guy. He would be a fifth-year senior and an immediate impact type guy. I wrote down this. In my scouting report, obviously is a good roller off the pick and roll, good lob threat, good hands for a big man, runs right down the middle of the court in transition and keeps his hands in the proper place to receive a pass. Don't really have a, you don't really have to run a play for him, right? He's one of those type of guys and defensively, he is a long rangy center that can impact the game in a multitude of ways close to the glass, whether that's rebounding or defensively and just blocking shots. He really could be that guy for Texas Tech where you're just like, hey, we got the five man covered. We're good to go in that regard with a long rangy type center. But before we get to the next guy and we'll do a lot more of a break breakdown and scouting report for him, like the video if you want more Texas Tech men's basketball transfer portal roster coaching staff videos here on the channel. I know a lot of y'all are interacting, but hey, there's 60% of y'all that watch these videos that don't subscribe. So I need a little bit more confirmation. I'm one of those guys. So like the video if you want more Texas Tech men's basketball videos every day right here on your one-stop shop for everything Texas Tech. Of course, it's the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's get to the player from the national championship game roster. Didn't end up winning. Didn't go to UConn. Instead, went to San Diego State. And we're talking about Keyshawn Johnson, a 6'7 senior forward, averaged 7.7 .7 points per game and five rebounds last year for the Aztecs, only shot 26.2% from three last season. But he's a versatile athlete and defender that can guard one through five, in my opinion, right? I probably feel better when it comes to probably three through five, but he can absolutely go out there with his feet and his athleticism and guard one through five in the guard positions. He runs the floor really well and finds space in transition. That's one thing that really stood out on tape is the kind of, he was the lag guy behind where he was beelining down the middle, but he was lagging behind the ball and trying to find the spot in the defense where he could make a beeline right to the rim, have his hands available for a dunk or an easy layup, and he did it quite often for the Aztecs last year. And I think this goes in part with that aspect of his game to him being a good cutter and understanding space. He ranked in the 70th percentile, excuse me, last year with 1.13 points per possession when he was cutting or having an action of a cut offensively. Really like that. A couple other things that stood out in his offensive game in terms of what I think could translate potentially from the Mountain West to the Big 12. He is an elite post-up player, and I do not use that word lightly. If you watch these videos, I hardly ever throw out the word elite, right? He is an elite post-up player. He averaged 1.1 points per possession, which ranked 89th percentile nationally last season on post-up plays. He's got a strong upper half, right? That allows him to really use his shoulders, lean in, create a little bit of space, and go up with a soft touch, right? That's one thing that also stood out. When he's in the paint, he has a really soft touch, and that's where about 65% of his shots came from last year. Also, really good at putbacks, right? We talked about him being elite as a post-up player. He's an elite putback guy as well. 1.41 points per possession, ranked in the 87th percentile last year when it came to putbacks, and 
I think this goes without saying. He can finish well through contact if you are ranking that high of a percentile when it comes to putbacks. Again, 1.41 points per possession. You'll take that. Now, he did shoot 53.2% from the field. That's solid. 65% from the line. Probably a little bit of improvement there. Um, and he ranked 11th percentile. Not good on the catch and shoot opportunities. I think it could get better. And if you ask me if he came to Texas Tech, I think he would be able to shoot more. But I think he would be put in more proper situations to succeed off the catch and shoot. And the way that I think he could do that is off the pick and roll opportunity and where he can go to the basket. But I like this shot for him. I think he's got a good shot. Um, and I think he can do it from the top of the key as a trail guy off the pick and roll. Instead of rolling to the basket, he hedges back and just kind of fades away from the defense and gets up a quick shot from the top of the key. I think he can shoot a lot better than his 26% from three. Maybe a lot is a strong word, but I think he can probably get in the neighborhood of 32% um, because the shot for him is there. Right. I just think he needs to do more and find his spots in terms of getting to them more often, which those catch and shoot opportunities. Right. He averaged about a steal and a block per game um, combined. So half a block, half a steal. Right. And he averaged right when you look at everything. It's just one of those deals where I don't think the numbers tell the whole story about him because he wasn't the guy at San Diego State by any stretch of the imagination. He was a role player, but I think he could take on a more significant role and be an impact player. Now, do I think he could be the guy for a team? Probably not. But I do think he could have a very big impact in the sense of, hey, I think he could be a two or a three on your team in terms of impact guy, because 7.7 .7 points doesn't scream that. But again, you got to think for the Aztecs last year, who again, played in the national championship game and lost to UConn, he was probably their fourth, third option most night, right? I think he can have a little bit more of a significant role offensively and up those numbers. Um, and again, this is a guy that Texas Tech is prioritizing. He's going out to Lubbock. And what do I always say in these videos? The hard part is getting them out to Lubbock. It's very easy to sell Lubbock, Texas and Texas Tech when you get guys out there. And I think this could be potentially one of those situations. I truly think Johnson could be a plug and play type player for Texas Tech. And it's going to be a very big weekend for the Red Raiders with Washington and Johnson out there. We're talking about two guys where if they did commit to Texas Tech, they're starting. It's that simple for me. I think that they are two impact starting level players in the Big 12 in the sense they will help Pop Isaacs and they will help others tremendously as well in terms of, hey, we'll allow you to play your game more on the perimeter. We'll do that dirty work inside. So Washington and Johnson are on campus right now for the Red Raiders and hopefully we hear good news on the commitment front for Grant McCaslin. He's two for two already when it comes to guys coming out to Texas Tech and committing. Obviously, we're talking about Darion Williams and Chance McCass and Chance, I almost called him Chance McCaslin. Chance McMillan, excuse me. But can he get Warren Washington and Kashid Johnson to commit to the Red Raiders? It would absolutely go a long way in terms of Texas Tech making an impact and getting, in my opinion, again, two starters for next season. But I got to ask you this. Do you want Texas Tech to land Kashid Johnson in the portal? Do you like his playing style? Do you like the scouting report I gave to y'all? Just got to ask you for a simple why for yes or in for no down in the comments below. And one more time, if you want more Texas Tech men's basketball transfer portal videos, more roster videos, more coaching staff videos, all you got to do is like the video. Let me know. And while you're at it, you're right next to it anyway. Join the largest and most interactive Texas Tech YouTube community right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.